Hello, welcome to TCG Bulk Kings, where every card has value. Today, I'm going to show you how we ship bulk singles effectively but cheaply enough to make a profit. First, we get our orders from the previous day out of TCG Player. You can export to the shipping info and the pull sheet at Open It with your favorite spreadsheet software. I check to make sure there isn't anything weird in the shipping information. Usually I get one message per day from a buyer who hasn't updated their shipping info and it needs to change, or else there's someone who has put their city and state info on the street line or something like that. It's important that I change it here because the next step is to print the address labels. I use a Dymo Label Writer 450 Turbo, which is a small thermal printer like what is used to print receipts, only it prints on stickers. I use the customer addresses on these with Dymo software, and out they come. If I don't check the addresses first, sometimes they come out all weird, or else the wrong info is on the label and the order goes to the wrong address, which is just a waste of money. Note, this is much better than writing out the envelopes by hand. I learned this the hard way because I started out writing out everything by hand. It would take me an extra hour or so to process the 15 orders max I had back in those days just because I was writing the envelopes out. The price on one of these printers is not high, $80 to $100 new depending on if you find a sale, or they are relatively easy to find used from $20 to $50. Then, I format the pull sheet so that I can print it out. Strictly speaking, I don't need to print it out, I could just leave the info on the screen, but I find I work from the list more quickly if it's printed out and I can check off each item with a pen. Next is to pull the cards for the orders. With orders pulled, now we can get to packing the orders. I have here a stack of cards to pack, I have clear tape, sticky notes, my return address self-inking stamp, a stack of number 6x3 quarters security envelopes, penny sleeves, semi-rigid card holders, and my business cards. For orders with a small number of cards, less than 8 cards, we look at the order on the screen and pull the correct cards from our stack of cards. We put them in the penny sleeve with the top of the card going into the closed end of the sleeve. Then put them into a semi-rigid card holder, open end down and fold it over if possible, though you can't really after three cards. Then we seal the top of the sticky note, taped down on the non-sticky end. This seals the top, prevents there being any sticky tape near the opening that could get on the card, and makes it easy for the customer to remove it to retrieve the card. We set this aside briefly while we prep the envelope. The envelope gets a self-inking stamp return address, a label with the customer's address on it, and the appropriate postage. Into the envelope now goes the newly protected card and a business card, sealed and set aside so we can begin the next one. For larger orders, we have to print postage from stamps.com usually around $3 to $4, which still leaves room for profit. Stacks of cards go along with a card holder into a team bag, which all goes into a small bubble mailer with a business card. The postage label prints out of my regular printer, as the thermal printer is too small to handle labels from stamps.com. Maybe something I look into changing in the future, but right now my system is working. Tape the label on with some shipping tape and it's ready to go. Everything that can fit in my regular mailbox is good to go in my regular mailbox. It is not necessary to physically take these to the post office, even the packages. Now some discussion of cost. I'm sure many of you watching are wondering how can he be squeezing a profit out of shipping in this fashion? Aren't stamps like 55 cents each? Aren't the card holders and everything else that adds up prohibitively expensive for selling bulk singles? I'll do another more in-depth video analyzing the profit profitability of selling bulk, but let's talk about the cost of materials here. Notwithstanding the cost of the product being shipped, I actually get my costs on everything else down to about 50 to 60 cents per plain white envelope order, depending on how cheaply I was able to get the stamps and the holders, the two biggest expenses. Envelopes I actually get from Walmart for about two cents each. Penny sleeves I usually get either in bundles with card holders or an MSRP, so a penny each. 
the address labels cost less than two cents each, the business cards I was able to get printed for less than three cents each, I can usually find card holders for around 15 to 18 cents each, and stamps are available on eBay for around 30 to 40 cents each, much less than the post office or even postage services like stamps.com. Not significantly more expensive for the mailers for larger orders, and shipping always comes out to less than my net after fees on an order. These aren't crazy prices. I'm not doing volume enough to get amazing wholesale deals or anything. I'm not buying pallets of envelopes or card holders or bubble mailers or getting huge discounts from USPS. I'm just a guy who's been forced to try to reduce costs as much as possible while still providing the level of care that I would look for if I were ordering cards from another seller. When you're trying to get a profit out of an order of four bartered cow and two ancient brontodont, you're going to get good at sourcing your materials so that your costs won't prevent you from making at least a few pennies on that order.